got called a faggot in my whole fucking life, bro. Top of the morning to you. They're fake and gay. If you want to blackmail me, blackmail me with money. It is. It's a. It's a fucking epidemic, and I'm. I don't know how. How, dude? How does a fucking organization that's as young as they are wield so much power? LDS has not been around that long. Well, I'm glad you asked. I do have some insight on that, dude. Please, uh, I, I'm. I'm like at my fucking wits' end with this shit. How do we live in a society like this? So when you brought that up last week, and we were talking about the, uh, or not on a show, but we we're we we're just talking off off camera about the the Gilbert Goon. I was venting this. about the yeah, society this, we live in. This is crazy. So I recalled listening to uh, a podcast and um, a couple of them where they talked about like the history of the LDS church and actually some more recent developments that weren't locally, but in, in other States, Utah specifically, obviously. So are you, are you aware about how like the LDS church uh, began with Joseph Smith and whatnot? Yes. I mean, uh, uh, enough. I mean, I know that, uh, do you, do you want me to tell you what I know? Or are you going to fill me in? Well, uh, I'm going to assume that you know. Tell tell us and tell the listeners. I mean, shoot. I mean, tell tell me what you got. I think most people know, like, the the story that we're told where some, like, (coughs) young teenager found some golden tablets. And then he became, That no one else could read. He put them in a hat and fucking uh, translated the tablets. Right, yeah. So he used to see your son. uh, Aided by an angel, uh, Moroni. Mm -hmm. Yep, Moroni is the angel. But there's some stuff that I did find out um that is not like our our normal mainstream even in like you know what we learn know about it you have to dig deep so first i want to give a a source because i did get a lot of this information from this person her name is the chiller uh chiller queen and she's a youtuber and she's done a lot of the research in deep diving that i i got this information so i want to give her credit but essentially so how it started with joseph smith He found these tablets. I don't remember how old he was, but he found the tablets. Um, And then the person he had translate them for with him, the scribe that he used was Oliver Cowdery, Crowdery, Crowdery. All right. So that's an important name, Oliver Crowdery. Um, Another key point was the church was formed by eight people. So like uh, Joseph Smith and then seven other dudes, they all brought the the tablets together and decided like, hey, we're going to make our church based upon what Joseph Smith read and the scribe uh, Oliver translated. You know, I'm actually going to share these notes so you can actually see them. And when was uh, uh, when was this? I mean, it was like 1800s, right? Yep. In the 18. uh, Yeah. 18 like early 1800s. Actually, have so, it's, so it's not even like it's not even like Joseph Smith had a fucking uh, army of publicists and marketers and propagandists uh, working for a thousand plus two thousand years like Christianity did. It, right. This is in in less than 200 years. This dude based on eight people, please keep going. Right. So I'll, and I, it kind of explains like why it's so powerful. So. So Joseph Smith, um, so after they kind of developed the, the religion or established it, those eight guys, um, and another person, they were in Peter Whitmore's house when they did this, right? Okay. All right. So after they got together and developed their religion, what Joseph comes to find out is that Oliver and Peter, they got together and they were using their own seer stone to write their own prophecy. Okay. So. He like walks in on him. He's like, dude, what are you guys doing? And like, oh, we're just, you know, we got, we're just writing our own prophecy. And Joseph basically says, no, dude, I'm the only one who has this connection to God. And what were the differences in the prophecy? Just like, uh, like a, a minute things or what? Well, we don't know because they okay. were allegedly destroyed. All right. Okay. All right. But what Joseph says is that whatever you guys are like getting is not from God. They're not from Moroni, they are from the devil. 
So Joseph tells him, dude, you got to destroy all the shit. Get rid of your secret seer stone because it's not a real one. Um, so allegedly they do that. Um, and then in 1838, you meant like you're asking about the time frame. In 1838, uh, Crowdry d decides to spread a rumor that Joseph Smith was hooking up with his maid. Okay. And so that is kind of like the the beginning of the whole, you know, like we know, what do we know Mormons for? Like, what is the stereotype about Mormons? Yeah, polygamy and they each get a planet with uh, with a bunch of uh, wives. Right. So the whole polygamy thing. So this dude spreads this rumor about Joseph Smith tell, saying basically he's hooking up with, with his maid and that perpetuates this whole polygamy, um, uh, I guess, stereotype through, or no, not even a stereotype. Because it was before that a polygamy um, idea within the church, within their okay. their very infant, within the infancy of the religion. Now, after uh, uh, Joseph, now Joseph Smith denied the fact that he believed that while he was still living, he documented that in his journals. But after he passed away, someone went in there, and it was it's very obviously doctored his personal journal journals to say like he recanted it on his deathbed okay because he was going while he was saying like no that's not true i'm not sleeping with the maid it's not okay to have multiple wives he started excommunicating these motherfuckers out of the church okay he's just kicking these guys out and when he ended up passing away someone went in there and said and essentially uh, did some 1800s photoshop in his journal saying, no, I recant on my deathbed. I'm actually cool with it. Okay. So that's all, that's how the whole polygamy thing was established in the Mormon church. And so this is to this day, there is like a controversy within the LDS church about the whole polygamy, Joseph well, Smith versus these guys. Right. And you know, the polygamy thing in the Mormon church is only like a, a just a small faction of the Mormon church that acknowledges that it's a real thing. Most, most LDS folks are, are not in support of the polygamy, polygamy thing. It's just a very small portion. Right. Because there was this division that yeah. started in the very beginning where it's Oliver and there's uh and Joseph, Joseph's like, no, it's not okay. But yet yeah. there's this other sect that was kind of breaking away in the beginning saying like, it is okay. Right. So. You know, like those shows called like Sister Wives and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, dude. Big Love was another one of those shows that yeah. um, uh, you kind of glorified the whole polygamy thing or, or whatever. So uh, th that's where they get their start. Um, what's this mm -hmm. David Hamlin thing? So if you look above that, the seer stone and the devil prophecy stuff was supposed to be destroyed. But allegedly, um, the Whitmer family kept that secret and passed it down okay. through generations. And that's actually... I'll... I'll, I'll like give the evidence or yeah yeah, yeah. Evidence. yeah all right so david hamlin all right this motherfucker is the worst human being in existence all right so he's a he's a psychologist he's in utah in 2012 he was charged with 18 counts of sodomy and rape of a child but the uh the charges were um dismissed by the attorney's office jeff uh, at the time, Jeff Benham, Bunham, however you say his name. And I didn't put the details, but say, essentially this dude is corrupt as fuck. Like okay. he was, um, I don't know. The, Let's I, say he, I, he's a, he's a, he's a corrupt, uh, uh, legal official that's been appointed by the state. Yeah. There were specific things that I read where he like, he dismissed stuff that was just obvious. Like there's so much evidence for it. So mm -hmm. anyways, moving on. Um, so what happened with, with David is, uh, all in 2012, everything was dismissed and the, I list some of the things that were named in the 2012 accusation. So the victim described a sexual assault where she and two other children were forced to stand in front of David while he directed them to take turns giving BJs on him. Uh, I'm, I'm reading through these things. I mean, go like, and read, read, read the, the yeah, this, this dude, I don't know how to read this well. dude is sick. I mean, he's a uh, command of the victims to perform oral sex, lick everything. They uh, occurred in Utah County. 
Dude, how, how many counts? Three counties between 1990 and 2010? That's fucking 20 yep. years this guy's been uh, victimizing his own family. They said that Oliver Crowd Crowdery was the founder of the LDS Church of Satan, and the Hamley, Hamblin family tracks back to Oliver Crowdery. Dude, that what? Yeah, so that's wild. So um, Hamblin, the, uh -huh. the victims, or alleged victims, back in 2012, they specifically said that he um uh he was the head of the church of satan they call it the lds church of satan the latter day saints what? of satan and that his bloodline tracks directly back to all Crowdery, of Crowdery. which was the dude who uh had the seer stone who was getting right. prophecy um alleged prophecy from the devil yep yeah which is what that's that's crazy so this dude is essentially is david hamblin is doing all this sick shit that was dismissed in uh 2012 to these kids uh -huh. he is he stated that he is the leader of the latter-day saint church of satan um and he has a, a direct bl bloodline from the the dude who defied uh, uh huh yeah joseph smith yeah yep exactly um let's hear uh oh okay so after this more recently i think it was oh, i didn't get the year but i think it was 2020 or night or 2019 okay there was this another dude named james bluth right and he came and he was he was gay and he was struggling with being gay, so he went to his bishop at his church, and the bishop referred him to David Hamblin, who was uh, this dude who's already accused of this shit, right? Uh huh. So what <laughs> Hamblin said is like, "All right, dude, you're gay, right? And the reason you're gay is because you were abused as a kid, and he used hypnosis and shit with him, and um, he." basically told him like the only way to become like to pray away you're gay is you have to re re enact these um these abuses uh, yeah the abuses with a righteous man and hamlin's like just you, you're just for your luck i'm a righteous dude right here you can reenact what do you it know me. what do you know <laughs> exactly so he gets this dude to like you know blow him or whatever and um he said he has magic come to, to fix him from his gayness. So everyone knows if you want to stop being gay, you just keep doing gay stuff. Apparently. Well, oh, well, uh, that's, that's right. Look, uh, <laughs> my, my justification uh, that was presented to me was, yeah, look, if you drink gallons of cum, you'll be less gay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. Two plus two equals five. Of course. Well, look, I started smoking cigarettes. What did my dad do when he caught me? He made me smoke 20 cigarettes. You get caught sucking one dick. You know how your dad fixes it? Makes you makes you suck 20 more dicks. <laughs> yeah. Checks out. I get it. I get so, it. So, all right. So after this happens, somehow Hamblin gets gets caught. Well, I, I don't remember if, if Bluth goes to the, the police or they're just investigating the shit, but he gets okay. caught and he confesses. And the dude loses his license, obviously, um, but yeah, he he gets he goes into the instead of being a psychologist or whatever his title was, um, a gay fixer or maybe a straight maker. Uh, he joins like the Native American church where there's not like uh, regulations, so he becomes a healer and what? just carries on with what he's been doing. Seriously? Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so I yeah. I love loopholes. I love loopholes. Yeah. So he's like now he's some healer for the Native Native American church. He's doing all the crazy shit. Um but how do these how does how does this uh new it uh, this infant ch religion this church how do they how does it how do they gain that much sway? It's because they infest every fraction of Government. That's the thing. Is like so. I mentioned the dude who, in the uh, in twenty twelve, who let him off. Uh huh. What tr what religion was that dude who let him off? Well, I'm sure LDS. LDS, of course. Yeah. So 
these Mormons, and it's not like, I mean, all, well, it is kind of all Mormons who infest every aspect. I mean, they're basically the Christian version of Jews. But the these guys who are, like, in Utah, this certain sect that is, like, the satanic church, uh-huh. um, they just do it way better. And they, they get in deep. And uh, what's crazy is, like, the they use these um, hypnosis things, like, tactics on these kids. I'm going to remove this. What? So th- one of the methods that they use is, and, and David Hamlin used this, is they – they use like a hip, hypnos, hypnosis method where they implant false memories. Okay. Sure. Extreme false memories. Like uh, they hung me upside down, they cut me open, but yet I'm still alive. That way, and this is argued by this YouTuber, I got this information. She says she believes that the reason they do this is when these kids go to the authorities and say like, hey, I was abused. They have this crazy story. There's no evidence for. Sure. Which so tracks. CIA has been doing it forever. Right. Yeah. So it's like MK Ultra, Mormon brand or whatever. Yeah. Hey, flash a series of lights and you can program a brain to say whatever you want it to say. Right. Yeah. So now there's something else that goes. So this David Levette dude that I had up on here. I'll bring this uh-huh. back on screen. Yeah. I know. So David Levette, this dude, he is a more recent county attorney. Of course, he's part of the the LDS church. Um, he There was a, uh, um, what do you call it? A, not a legal case, but essentially allegations against him. Okay. And basically stating that he was part of uh, Hamblin's group and he was involved in... Uh, child sacrifice, cannibalism, and essentially this whole Church of Satan thing. Whoa. Yeah. And so, so he that's got what kinda, he was accused of. Yeah. But it was in a document that was kind of like, if you, like you know, the recent Epstein documents that released? They were sure. court documents. that re- Same concept. They were court documents that someone did a Freedom of Information Act. Okay. And he was he was given a heads up. Before they release, so he went on, and I, I should pull up the the statement. Basically, he comes up, he does this like a sob story. We're like, you know, I've served, you know, our state of Utah for so long, and I just got noticed that someone accused me of cannibalism and just making wild statements, right? You know, doing the politician uh-huh. shit. Um, yeah. So, but he's obviously connected to all these people. It's insane. And and so you know, based on on your notes i mean uh the law firm representing the lds how was the lds brought into all of it oh my god holy shit so all right so back uh this is i don't know how far back this goes but essentially the whatever law firm that either defends the organization of the lds church or or whatever parts of it in utah they created this hotline for kids that were abused and essentially they said instead of calling the police call our hotline and we'll connect you with people that will you know get you to whoever you need to be got to to take care of you but what really happened is kids would call this hotline and this would be directly fed to the law firm and they would just send it to court and have it dismissed by this attorney general yeah i mean i i can't um, the amount of fingers in pies, bro. Uh, this is a full on conflict of interest. And it's, uh, if churches had to register as corporations, not nonprofits, but as mm-hmm. literal, actual non-protected corporations, this would sway quite differently. It's, ins- well, it is the, um, the protections that some churches have. And that's why. I think all the churches. Catholic Church was able to get away with all their, the shit, the shenanigans they were doing with kids, right? Well, look at cults, dude. Any if if you, if your daughter uh, or son or whoever joins a cult, that's dangerous. You have zero, zero ability to do anything about it. You can't approach their property. You can't say anything about them because it's slander and it's they're protected. Uh, they're if they if they're registered as a church. 
that's protected. What, right. But even if they're just a a, a a a cult, they have protection. But as soon as they cross that line to being recognized as a valid religion, like Scientology, uh, the LDS Church, um, I'm I talking to you, Glenn, as, best as, motherfucker. I think as Jesus said, when more than one are gathered in my name, so there I am. That's a, yeah, God that's a religion. Is, yeah, God is here. You only have to file. You don't have to be a registered. Uh, you don't have to be a credible religion. As long as you filed, hey, I'm a religion. I am a church. I have followers. I have adherents. You're religion, and you're protected no I, matter what. Yeah, and that that is that actual Bible verse where um, it says where two or more are gathered in my name. Basically, God, so is, there you, I am. God is here to God protect is you. you. Um, and... For me, that's been a person for me personally, that's actually been a uh, like a verse that I've carried with me because I've never liked any organized church or religion. Well, not to get in deep history, but yeah. So organized religion churches usually are super gay. Um, so I never liked them. But so that verse resonates with me because it's like, hey, you know, it doesn't matter like where you are. But the way that these people have like uh, utilized that that verse, phrase. Yeah. Yes. To become like to LARP as a real uh, religion to carry on these nefarious acts is just disgusting. Yeah, I, I, it, well, and that's that's the thing, dude. Is uh, um, these uh, these church or these religious organizations that fucking pull strings somehow? They have got lobbyists. They've got money in in disgusting places. Dude, the Vatican has more money than most first world countries, um, but they're protected they're protected and and uh they don't have to register as corporations they are just ethereal they they don't actually exist and you can't hold them accountable it's like the the military courts you cannot hold right. actual men in the military accountable they're prosecuted by their courts and who knows how the fuck that works well it's Rape like when the civilian. fbi investigates itself right that's right yeah that's right yeah, a governing body investigating itself. You have no idea how it works, and, and you actually don't have any say in it. So you might as well just let my kid rape your son with a broomstick. Mm -hmm. Just let it happen. That's crazy. Um, so I got two more more recent. I don't have details, but just some things to touch on. These are more recent, like things that coordinate with it, because they're all from the same place. All these people are are all connected in some way and from the same small part of Utah. Um, so Ruby Frank, uh, she was a, she, or she, or she was a popular YouTuber and okay. essentially her YouTube channel is called eight passengers. Have you heard of that? I, I, I've, I saw that there was drama surrounding this lady, but I never yeah. like got down into it. So this psychopath, she was basically, she had a YouTube channel where she talked about how, like how to raise kids and shit. And she lived in the same part of town that these other people lived in, in Utah. And it came out that she has been, she's she pleaded guilty for uh, essentially abusing her kids. She did shit where she made her kids uh, do like a, a wall sits for hours and hours. Um, she, dep like if her kids uh, ate too much food, she would like uh, gag them and shit, like really crazy stuff, um, like you know stuff that we would do with our kids, but we wouldn't tell anyone. You know what I mean? And and YouTube <laughs> allowed her to make money and influence people under the guise that she was a good mom. Well, no, this wasn't public what she was doing. With the right, kids. but the, yeah. but they, but yep. I mean, of and, course, and yeah. People had people had been making claims about this woman that she was a child abuser before. She was brought to court. Yes. And YouTube still allowed her to have a channel. And has right. any charges been brought against YouTube for culpability or responsibility? No. The answer is no. So here's where they get us, though. They get us talking about these one, this one person. But who is allowing this one psychopathic person to have a voice? YouTube is. Is YouTube held Google. responsible? Nope. No. Not at all. It's fucking sick, bro. Give me all some right. more. So the, the last one. Anyway, so she's tied in with all the same shit. 
the last one is the most recent, which is the most triggering triggering for a lot of the uh, conservative losers. Tim Ballard. Does that name a ring a bell? Uh, I don't know who that is, no. Sound of Freedom was a recent movie that was released. I've heard of it. I haven't watched it. All right. Neither have I. Not Probably not ever going to. So, so Sound of Freedom was a hit because it essentially the story was it's based on a true story about how this dude, Tim Ballard, went and rescued a bunch of like kids that were being uh, sex trafficked in, I don't know, some shithole country, right? Sure. And so this, I don't know if the, the real story about how this movie came to be is true, but this is the way they portrayed it. They made the movie years ago. The main character that plays Tim Ballard is the dude that was Jesus Christ in Passion of the Christ. Jim Caviezel. Yes, Caviezel, yeah. So he so he was the main character. Um, they made the movie, and they sold it to Disney. And then Disney sat on it, saying, like, we're not going to do the movie. We bought the movie, but we're not going to, pr- like, produce it. So it's all this, like, oh, you're doing a conspiracy against us. We're the victims, because we made this great movie about how we're going to protect kids and blah, blah, blah. The movie finally gets independently bought back from Disney, from a, a, a Mexican, a big Mexican investor who okay. he's really into saving kids. So he spent a bunch of money uh, to buy back the movie from Disney somehow to okay. make sure that it, it fulfills being produced and he could show the public this great story about saving kids from third world countries. Sure. <laughs> Out of the kindness of his heart. And don't look too like, don't look too into his connection with the cartel. That's not important. Um, don't follow the impor- money. Yeah. What's important is that he did it out of the kindness of the heart. He, he okay. used all this money that he had. Don't worry about where it came from. He, he bought the movie back, produced it. And there we go. There you go. Tim Ballard. The guy who is the real life guy who apparently was the guy who saved all these kids. And I'm sure he did. Like, I, I'm not saying he didn't. Good for him. I'm glad he did. However, the way he used people who, what he did with the other female assets, the way he used them to be his pretend wife, he said, God needs to, God told me that we need to, um, actually practice being husband and wife absolutely that way we could sell it to the the, the reverse honey pot that's right uh-huh. and he did this with a lot of women and yet he is he and another thing he did with uh uh was it caviezel did you say was the that's actor right. so tim ballard in order to get caviezel in character he sat with him and showed him hours of child porn so he can understand, you know, so where he's he can coming internalize from. the 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 yeah. sickness uh, of the of the society that we live in, so he could really feel it down in his bone. Or... Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, you know, for me and you, we just hear hear that word like child porn, and it's not enough. Like, we can't just get upset enough, like that we were like I would probably kill someone to know about that, but. Um, that's just not enough. You got to watch it hours and hours of it. I I mean, uh, look, um, having never been a killer, uh, but only a dad, but only mm-hmm. a dad. I mean, I could I could imagine, you know, murdering. But no, I mean, I think to really get that conviction, maybe this guy's got a point. Maybe I have to watch um, unending hours of child porn to really I'm a method actor. You know, I method. I really get into the uh, character of this tortured man who had to watch hours of porn to finally go save those girls. Mm. So what the, what this guy is saying is that for him to go save those girls, he had to watch child porn first and then go save the girls for Jim Caviezel to watch child porn to play a guy saving girls. Well, yes, that's exactly what it was. It like, not only did did uh, Tim Ballard have to watch the porn to be able to, like, go save the be girls. undercover, because he right. had to be undercover. He also, he told... Caviezel, in order for him to play the character, he has to sit with him and also watch the hours of child pornography to get in character so he could play him. As a registered method actor, I approve of Jim Caviezel watching child porn. 
as uh, like the dude who played think- Jeffrey Dahmer ate uh, ate his gay victims, um, so he could be more like Jeffrey Dahmer who ate his gay victims. I mean, but it, he it didn't though. All over Hollywood. That's the, that's the best part is that didn't that's really. That's right. That's right. It didn't really happen. But you know, Jim Caviezel uh, did watch child porn. Yes. 